we're talking today because we want to remember Elizabeth McIntosh, who she was, and the wickedness of her being murdered. I think everyone is so curious about it because the big fishy thing is how quiet everyone is about it. There might be some people that might be able to, on the seminary side, that might be able to shed some light on this case, but they ain't talking, (laughs) if you know what I mean. The number of people accused of concerning behavior on this individual campus is high. (laughs) It's not that I can't believe it, it's that I can believe it. I just know of too many cases of abuse in the PCA, domestic abuse, and I would say the typical response that I have seen is just a pretending that it's not happening. A young man came running in, very distraught, and said, Dr. Van Groningen, please come. Something has happened in the bathroom. It just seemed evil, and my instinct was to turn the other way from, from evil. Because it was possible that the killer was, like, amongst you? I think so. Yeah, it was just a really weird vibe. She was, I could describe it as Scottish strong-willed. She knew what she thought. She studied. So she would state her case, stand her ground. She was older, so she could ask for respect. She could have been their mother. I would say she didn't suffer fools lightly. You know, whether that fool was a fellow student or even a pastor or teacher, she was greatly respected and loved by people. But she was serious and she had strong ideas. I had a key to all the classrooms, except the ones in the chapel. After 33 years, I never had a key to the chapel. And that was because that's where Liz was murdered. It's an open wound that just doesn't go away. Some of the football players from the high school started following me home and throwing snowballs at me filled with rocks, uh, calling me the murderer's daughter. That prompted my parents to take Carl and I to Sioux Falls Park. Basically said, yeah, like when your dad was a student at Covenant, he was a work-study janitor. There was a woman working underneath him named Elizabeth who was murdered. You know, your dad is the prime suspect. He didn't do it. He was framed. There's such a fear, I think, in a lot of our institutions of the image we're presenting and keeping our vows. And I'm and like, those are not unimportant things, but just everything's locked down. You talk about losing your ordination all the time over this. Because another aspect in our circles, at least, is we talk about honesty and brokenness and willingness to be vulnerable and all these beautiful things. But it depends on what you're talking about as to how far that goes. I have a hunch that some of the police department might realize the story could end up being more about bad policing than it ends up being about a dirty seminary. Well, because that is kind of the story publicly about it now, outside of the seminary, is that the police botched it. Not being able to have the cooperation we would have suspected we'd have gotten from the seminary was frustrating. And that played out years and years and years after that. And they actually did their own investigation, which we've never seen. This is about a woman whose life was taken on the campus of the seminary. And so kind of discovering the ongoing involvement of the administration, the knowledge of the administration and the board, uh, and lawyers being involved, and that not being disclosed to the public or to the police has been really quite troubling. And I'm just speaking of my own tribe here. In the Christian faith, why is that their default mode? What do you have to lose by being countercultural? I think sometimes uh, Christian institutions are often more institution than Christian. The suggestion to go and serve other gods in the Old Testament, just the suggestion was to be made punishable by death. If we were to apply that today, it would certainly open up a few positions in most of the theological seminaries, wouldn't it? I turn to look ahead and I hear a a whisper and he says, Norm. And I, I look back and our eyes meet. And he looks me in the eye and he says, I'm not going to make it. And he lets go. I just feel like I'm stuck now. There's no way I can resolve it. I honestly didn't murder Elizabeth McIntosh. Honest to goodness, I didn't do it. Coming December 19th, True Believer, the unsolved murder of Elizabeth McIntosh. Visit truebeliever.podcast.com to learn more and subscribe today. 
wherever you get your podcasts.